Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel, Making Sense of Credit. I'm Tony Hill. I'm a personal and small business credit coach, online marketer, YouTuber, uh, automotive consultant, and real estate uh, master. Hey, welcome. Hey, look, I, uh, I told you I was going to come back uh, to you folks with another video regarding hard inquiries. Man, it seems like uh, hard inquiries are really, really been uh, demanded all over the place. I think because a lot of people are applying for credit like crazy because we're in a pretty tough time during this coronavirus. And I wanted to kind of cover this and hopefully, uh, you know, I, I can give you folks a few things that will help you uh, going forward with these hard inquiries. Uh, look, before I dive in, um, smash the like button, hit the notification bell for upcoming content. Uh, feel free to make a comment if you like. And uh, share this with your friends and family if you think it's something they could use. And uh, most of all, subscribe to my channel. Thank you and welcome. Hey, look, let's just talk about hard inquiry. Let's talk about some facts, some hard facts. You know, most of you guys, I'm guessing if you're watching this, and maybe a newbie, you should probably look up what's a hard inquiry, what's a soft inquiry. But hard inquiry typically occurs when you, you know, you, you try to get a uh, credit card, or a loan, that's typically called a hard inquiry, hard inquiry because the lender is going to check your credit history um, and see if you meet the, um, you know, the credit worthiness uh, of their criteria. Um, you know, you'll hear, you know, you hear it called a, a, a hard pull uh, or a hard credit check. That's what a hard inquiry is, and that shows up on your credit file. And if you have, a, a, you know, a lot of people have alerts, see there, whether it be Credit Karma, Experian, my FICO, whatever the case may be, you'll get some alert that someone pull your credit after you've done that. Um, look, I mean, one thing you, you I think people are kind of um, not really getting a, a lot of times with inquiries that, or even with credit, I think they, they will visit place to place to place thinking that somehow their scores have changed and um, you know they think some someone's going to see something different on your credit well it's not folks pretty much everyone has mm -hmm. all your credit uh, at the tip of their hands no we don't know which bureau they're going to pull for sure but uh, you know so the number one reason the number one way to prevent these inquiries number one if you get turned down, call a timeout. Stop. Stop applying. Stop applying for uh, for credit and figure out what's on your credit so you can actually uh, work on your credit to get your scores up before you get in trouble with uh, an inquiry. And I'm, get, I'm getting folks with 30 to 40 inquiries. It's just I have never seen it in my 35 year history as more uh, as as much as I've had uh, you know this year 2020. But like I said, I think a lot of people are a little desperate. I know times are tough and people are thinking that they need to do all they, all they can do to, to get the finance. And I get that. I totally get that. But the way, but trying to, you know, go to different lenders or different banks or different creditors is not the way to do it. You know, call time out and you need to figure out what's on your credit and work on your credit from there. Look, I mean, if you don't know, uh, hard inquiries can stay on your credit uh, up to two years. But yeah, there are ways to get inquiries off. You know, um, I, I have a few videos that you can check out. I'll leave a link in the description um, below. And I have a couple other tools that you can use for inquiries too. Um, but more than anything, let's just talk. I want to talk facts. So first of all, you should know FICO scores don't consider inquiries greater than 12 months old so you know you'll be looking at your inquiries and, and i think people are really uh this whole inquiry thing is kind of got out of hand <laughs> you know i have people with three inquiries like oh i gotta get these inquiries off I think, well, what are you talking about so when you, your inquiry is 12 years i mean 12 months old there's really not even considered in the fico scoring system any longer so they don't even consider it. Yes, you, you don't want to have a, a ton on there. And I know it may be look bad if you got, you know, six or seven. But if if you got six or seven inquiries and five of them are, uh, you know, more than 12 months, FICO, they do even consider in their scoring. So 
just throw, wanted to throw that out there. Um, look, if you have multiple hard inquiries and uh, you report, um, yeah, you know, and, and a, you know, a ton of inquiries, yeah, that, that's certainly going to hurt you because creditor, you look desperate, like you're trying to get credit and, you know, they don't want to see a lot of inquiries. So it's not, it's not good. But if you got, you know, on an average, you know, uh, five to six a year, you're okay. Um, so, so don't, don't go crazy more than anything in inquiry. Look, I haven't seen a whole lot of people with 750 get turned on because they got six or seven inquiries. You know, it doesn't happen very much. Although right now during a pandemic, we're in a different time. This is not normal for sure. So, and I think people are more, you know, uh, aware of that. And of course, you know, they may get turned out with good, you know, with better scores than normal when they're getting turned out. And that's just because, look, lenders are kind of running scared because they're trying to, you know, uh, the, what they have out there as far as their portfolio, yeah, they're being more selective, but it's not normal. So what you could do to, to kind of combat that is really kind of know which lenders are, are doing a better job at, um, you know, uh, at extending credit. You know, I mean, Capital One really kind of, uh, you know, tucked their heels and kind of disappeared. So the Discover and you, you know, and and Chase, you know, Chase has always been tough, but they're tougher. Um, you know, so just be aware of that and, and try to get some idea on, you know, what your qualifications need to be and before you apply. That way you don't get it, you don't rack up a ton of inquiries. Um, you know, look, for most people, one inquiry may drop your score a few points temporarily. Uh, but lenders aren't going to decline application uh, just because you have one and two inquiries. That's just not going to happen. Um, look, and I know some of you folks uh, have been through identity theft. Um, and actually, if I don't know if you notice or not, but pretty much most of the bureaus you can get on a phone and a lot of them will uh, help you delete inquiries over the phone, especially Experian. Experian is really good. Look, Experian is the quickest as far, you know, they're the toughest when you're trying to get something deleted off your credit, but they're, they're one of the best and easiest to work with when, it, when you want to get a hard inquiry off your credit, especially if you got something that's an identity theft. You can get on the phone and talk to one of their specialists, and a lot of times, you know, they will delete stuff, you know, uh, very quickly. So, and I've seen as little as a couple, an hour, a couple hours. Um, look, also too, not all, not all inquiries impact your, uh, your credit score. You know, when you're shopping for like an auto or a mortgage and you have several inquiries in a, um, typically in a, within a 14 day period, um, credit score models will consider them as one. So, um, but like I said, even even that, and, and I know they say that, and that's and that's true, you know, that, that'll be one. But what you don't want to do, you don't want to rack up a ton of inquiries because afterwards they look bad to the lenders, right? So even though you're shopping, know what the qualifications are. You can Google it. You know, what's the average credit score of American uh, Platinum Card? What's the average score of a Discover Card? What's the average score? of Chase, you know, you could do that to a lot. And if you know you don't fit in the parameters, you know, then don't apply. And the other thing I, uh, I tell my clients too, I was like, before you apply for anything, number one, you need your FICO scores. And the FICO scores for that particular uh, financial apparatus that you're going after, if it's a credit card, if it's a mortgage, if it's an auto, go to myfico.com and before you apply for anything, get go to my FICO and get your FICO scores. That way you can see your bank scores, your mortgage scores, your auto score before you apply to anything. And then have some kind of idea what the qualifications are before you apply to. Um, look, look, all those other things out there, Credit Karma, even Experian. You guys, you know, if you follow me, you know I'm one of my favorites. And especially you can get your, um, I, I showed you how to get your reports off for your reports for free and your, your uh, FICO uh, eight scores for free for all from all three check that video out but at the end of the day when you're going for a particular you know 
financial apparatus like a, a, a auto a mortgage or a credit card you need to know what those scores are um, before you go in and apply and please 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 don't apply based on your vantage 3.0 don't apply for anything from credit karma because you know those scores could be 60 70 80 percent uh wrong you know and most times they're they're you know your actual fico scores are lower than what your um vantage 3.0 scores will say because they use a different algorithm so just be aware of that um what else um look sometimes you can dispute uh, hard inquiries on your credit report and more than likely, I want, I want to dispel this myth about, ooh, I got, you know, you know, uh, 10, getting off five or six, seven, eight, uh, inquiry is going to get you 30 points. Not so. I've been doing this for a long time. I hardly ever see anyone's scores go up because of that. If you'll see that in, in really the best parameter that you can kind of see, which was experience, where you see the scores increase, more than likely it's something else, especially if the month change. And your your you know your credit aged another month, or your utilization came down. But this whole method, you know, your score is going up 30, 40 points. Hey, it's it's BS. That's all I can tell you. And I've been doing this a long time. I I have deleted. I couldn't tell you how many clients I've deleted. 10, 15, 20, uh, 28. I just did a video. 28 um, inquiries, and the scores barely uh, move. If it's a few points, who knows? This is really very tough to kind of uh, quantify it, you know, where it is. But you don't see your, your your credit shoot up 30 points because you deleted 10, 15, 20 inquiries. I've never seen it. So that's a must. That's a, that's a uh, misnomer. Um, the other thing, the last thing I'll cover with you guys is this. Be careful about going after inquiries that you have accounts with because, and and I know I have, look in my all my years I haven't seen this where you know they will close your account, but just be careful. One one I I do know, you, uh, and if you guys don't know, like if you guys have a My Jewelers Club and I think a New Coast Direct or some of these other ones that really kind of give you, you know, credit limits, larger credit limits to buffer these smaller limits that you're getting. And, and then if in their fine print, not even fine print, I think it's just a normal print, will my jewelers club tell you, you know what, if you try to delete this inquiry, they will close your account. So definitely stay away from that one for my jeweler if you got a, a credit limit of 5,000 through them. Um, and I'm gonna give you a secret, uh, a really, really good secret. So I, I'm hoping you guys stay with me through the end of this, but, um, and if you guys don't know, my Blueprint uh, Masterpiece, man, it's been working great. I tweaked it. It's the best uh, masterpiece I've put out yet. And if you don't know what it is, it's an investigation dispute form. You can dispute anything on your credit. Also, I added a, one for inquiries and one for late payments. But And you can get that in the link below. It's not free. That's all I could tell you. But it's inexpensive. But... Uh, you know, the seller has to say this. You want to, if you have more than, so let's say you have an account, an inquiry, but it's six of them. A little secret, a little credit hack for you guys. Claim one of those, typically claim the first one, the earliest one, and then, and then um, dispute the other inquiries as um, duplicates. And it, it works beautifully. And most times, most times than not, you'll get those deleted. So I just figure I'll, I'll drop that over to you guys. So that's a little, little credit hack for you guys to use in, in, the, in the future. But I just want to say, hey, slow your roll on these inquiries. Um, you know, and I know some of it's, it's, for a lot of you guys, it's too late. So now you're trying to figure out how do I get them off? Look, the, uh, the uh, blue the blueprint master uh, masterpiece also works with TransUnion and Equifax too. Look, Experian is always going to be the quickest one. I just got I just got this Experian up here. Um, this is one of I think it's like 
you know, 30 different deletions, okay? And I just had that up to, sh to show you that it's possible to get these inquiries deleted. Um, but it also, experience gonna be first, and then transunion and Equifax, you gotta fight with those guys a little bit. Generally, if you go a second, third time with disputes, um, and also, um, you know, when you, you know, make sure, like I said, I'm not a big, I, I've never gotten a, a, a dispute <laughs> notarized, but get them certified. So, uh, and that's gonna help you. So if you, if you do uncertify with Equifax and TransUnion, you're gonna have a tougher time getting them, getting them um, deleted. So make sure you do a certified with, you, you, Experience doesn't matter. You don't, you don't need to do notary or certification with experience. Typically, um, when you dispute those with that uh, blueprint masterpiece, they're going to go away. Also, too, I'm going to add to that, and I was just thinking about it, for, for all you folks maybe who've had something that's fraudulent, uh, some fraudulent inquiries on your file, I'm going to add another uh, uh, sheet to that dispute. So... Uh, and you'll find that in the description of this video uh, for fraudulent. And look, those are going to come off faster. Now, some of you guys are going to choose to use that sheet instead of the regular one. And that's okay. That's that's your choice. Okay. That's your choice um, that the those are fraudulent. So, but look, hey, Tony Hill, making sense of credit, making sense of making money online. Um, be safe. Stay six, eight feet of back. Wear a mask. And... Um, yeah, definitely social distance and uh, wash your hands and and uh, be safe. Take care of your family. Until the next video, hopefully you guys got something, uh, some good stuff out of this. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.